Okay, come on guys, we just, we have to do better than this. Why is this thing the second best selling graphics card on Amazon.com? Now in today's video, we're gonna do some actual consumer advice. I know, I know, it's been a while. <laughs> but I, I really feel like this needs to be addressed. Um, I was browsing Amazon recently and I actually stumbled across the best selling page. And I was horrified to see that this, the GT710, was second on that list. Now I really feel that this needs to be addressed because for some reason, a lot of people are buying this thing. And if you're watching this video to decide whether or not you should spend the $50 on a GT710, I can tell you right now, the answer is almost definitely no. Um, but I'm going to discuss various use cases and stuff like that later in the video. But before we get into any of that stuff, let's just kind of look at it and laugh to ourselves a little. <laughs> this is the actual 2 gig version with GDDR3. There is a 1 gig version and there's also a GDDR5 version. But again, none of them are worth your time. The version of the GT710, which is the second best selling graphics card on Amazon at the moment, uh, is actually slightly different to this version. It's also by MSI, and it's also the two gigs of GDDR3 version. However, the version on Amazon actually has a fan, uh, whereas this one is passively cooled. Now in this video, I'm going to say a lot of negative things about this graphics card. So in order to balance it out, I am going to point out a couple of ways in which this graphics card is actually better than the RTX 2080 Ti. Now the first one is the fact that because this is passively cooled, it means that it doesn't make any noise, which, you know, is a big advantage over the RTX 2080 Ti. And another way in which this is actually better is that it has this removable VGA port cable on it, which is a big advantage to have over, over the RTX 2080 Ti. When compared to other kind of fairly small graphics cards, it is tiny. And what that means is that you can actually use it in low profile cases, and it does come with low profile bracket adapters. So you can use this graphics card in any case you can imagine. And that is another way in which it's better than a 2080 Ti. Uh, but when you compare it to like a properly chunky graphics card like this GTX 1080, it is really little. And it actually looks hilarious inside a normal gaming rig because you kind of, you kind of can't see it. Like it, it, it's like there isn't a graphics card in there. With the physical breakdown out of the way and the quick giggle at how unsatisfyingly tiny this graphics card is, uh, let me just do a quick breakdown of the test system I used for this graphics card. Now it's got an i7-9700K in it, overclocked to 5 gigahertz. I just wanted to be 100% sure there was no CPU bottleneck while testing. Uh, it's also got 16 gigs of RAM. Now in my opinion, the only real fair comparison for this graphics card is actually the integrated graphics in the 9700K, which has the HD 630 Intel integrated graphics in it. Now that might seem like a really stupid comparison, but <laughs> when we get into the benchmarks, you'll see that it, that, it, that it really isn't. But actually, yeah, with that, let's see how this thing compares to Intel integrated graphics. No, I'm actually like legitimately shocked at how badly this graphics card performed. I mean, I knew it was gonna suck. I knew it was gonna be really bad. And when I benchmarked it, I, I, I kind of tested it before I tested the integrated graphics. I was like, wow, this thing really sucks. That must mean that integrated graphics are gonna be even worse. So when I got double the performance in CSGO from integrated graphics as opposed to this thing, it, it kind of blew my mind. Why does this exist and why are people buying it? The thing is like, when you look at the average frame rate and the 0.1% lows, it's pretty horrendous, but it's actually worse than that because it's got this really weird input lag while gaming, which makes it completely and utterly unplayable. 
I guess Dota is playable on it, but only if you have the lowest standards ever. It may seem a little bit unfair that I benchmarked it at 1080p, uh, the, the, the resolution that I used, but honestly, no one wants to game at under the native resolution of their monitor, unless you're a low-spec gamer. But really, this thing performs terribly, and you shouldn't buy one. I know a lot of you are going to hear that statement, and you're going to tell me, David, the thing is, no one's actually buying this piece of crap to game on it. However, if you're a parent and your kid comes to you and says that they really want to play Fortnite or Minecraft or KFC Love Simulator or whatever it is that the kids are playing at the moment, you're going to go onto Amazon and you're going to look for a graphics card to upgrade your system. And this thing is second on the list of the recommended graphics cards. And it only costs 50 bucks. So you go, okay, yeah, I'm willing to spend $50 to upgrade a PC so my kid can do that stuff. The problem is, if you have a CPU from the seventh generation or later from Intel, you're gonna have better integrated graphics. And another issue with this graphics card is, uh, I recently watched a Christopher Yee video where he went to buy PCs from like random pawn shops. And one of the things that he pointed out is that you often get these like scam gaming PCs where they put a GT 710 in a PC and then they sell it to you as a gaming PC because it's got dedicated graphics in it. In no world can you sell a PC with this thing in it as a gaming PC. So if you are in a local shop looking at cheap computers to buy for a gaming PC, if it has a GT 710 in it, ignore it, run away, do not buy it. However, there are a couple of use cases where it becomes more difficult to just reject this graphics card. Now, the first one that I can think of is if you're like a day trader or somebody that needs multiple monitors for productivity um, and you don't have multiple monitor outputs on your current PC, you just buy this thing, add it in, and then you can plug in three monitors and, and productivity away. It's not amazing for that use case either because it's got a really bad assortment of video outputs. I mean, it's got an HDMI, which is great, I guess. And then it also has a DVI port and a VGA port. I mean, that's a very dated rear IO for a graphics card to have. And you're definitely gonna have to use adapters and things like that if you're using any kind of relatively modern monitor. So for that use case, it's kind of possible, but it's not ideal. And then that brings me to the final use case, and that's if you have no more than $50 to spend on a graphics card. Now, if you're a consumer and you want to do anything other than just browsing the internet with your PC, I would definitely recommend buying a secondhand graphics card instead. I know that that's a bit scary for some people, but you're gonna get a lot better value for money because this thing just, it, it's so terrible. And considering the performance, it's actually really bad value for money. With that, let me know in the comment section below if I missed any potential use cases for this graphics card. Uh, like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Instagram, Twitch, um, Twitter was the other one, and there's a Discord server as well. Thank you very much for watching, and until the next video, bye-bye.